design and engineer by our engineering teams both here in Michigan, in Honey High Falls, New York, and Mainz Castell, Germany. It represents the fifth design iteration on our road production in the Volt. And if we reference this chart back here, uh, we can show you how we've moved from the, our beginnings about one and a half years ago. Uh, one and a half years ago was our first design iteration. Uh, we delivered our pack November 2007. Actually, it was two packs. Those packs are still on test in the lab today. And we're built strictly to prove that this pack package, this pack capacity could be built and would function. Uh, we then expanded uh, soon after into our engineering development vehicle phase, where we proved that these concept packs could in fact be integrated into a uh, electric, extended range electric vehicle propulsion system. Approximately one year ago, we then started our mule phase. The mule vehicle is the vehicle you saw drive on stage today. We built approximately 25 um, vehicle packs and 25 lab packs. This was a major effort to bring our decoupled development program to an end and prove that in significant numbers, we could in fact um, solve this problem. At that point, we made our commitment to our production development phase, which is the phase we're in now. We had a small risk reduction pro uh, program at the beginning of this year, we referred to the EV1 pack, which is our full production and temp pack design, which led to what you see here today. This pack was built as part of this build program starting last month. On a scale of 100, we have approximately 75 lab packs, 85 vehicles, and over 100 packs dedicated just for qualification of our manufacturing system. All told, you can see that to date we've built over 100 packs, and by the end of the third quarter of this year, we'll have built over 300 packs. That, by the way, are more packs than some of our electric vehicle competitors have ever built in, in their history, but represents what's required in order to meet the quality and performance this isn't just an experiment, this is not a kit car, this is a, a true volume production vehicle. Um, inside we have of course over 200 lithium ion cells from our supplier LG Chem. These are an advanced lithium ion polymer, as been stated before. Uh, over 200 designed into a proprietary structure that integrates the cells physically, mechanically, also their electric busing through their high voltage tabs sensing and a very advanced thermal management system. Controlling the temperature of the cells is critical to both performance and long life. Uh, the pack also includes control electronics. We have multiple microprocessors in the pack. We have our high voltage switch gear at the front. You can see our input output on the front of the pack. We also have our structural tray, which is a critical part of the vehicle structure. It contributes to body stiffness as well as crash performance. We also bring in the, what's referred to as the floor bar, another structural component of the body structure. Um, we enclose the entire pack in a environmentally sealed uh, enclosure. Uh, seals the pack to dust and water. The pack is mounted underneath the vehicle, so it is key that this is completely water and dust proof. Uh, it also includes an aerodynamic closeout to improve aerodynamics on the vehicle, as well as an insulation package to maintain uh, battery time while the vehicle is off and unplugged. The design has changed in every detail from the very first pack, but at this point is comprised of 155 unique part numbers. Um, those 155 unique part numbers um, are key because 147 of them were designed and engineered by General Motors. It is truly our design, uh, working with our key suppliers, for instance, for solid uh, like LG Count. The pack also represents uh, another major milestone in that it completely supports high volume manufacturing. Uh, our battery plant was announced recently here in Michigan, and we will be producing these uh, packs in very, very high volume. To give you an idea of what kind of volume we're talking about, uh, we have a, a small, uh, small illustration here. When we're up to full line rate, our annual battery production will exchange over three terawatt hours of energy through their life in the vault. So it's one year's worth of batteries, that's three billion kilowatt hours of energy processed in and then of course out of the battery during its life. That's the same amount of energy produced by Hoover Dam in about nine months. We're talking about a serious number of batteries, very high capacity batteries, and we think it clearly shows General Motors' commitment to the electrification of vehicles. Now, can you take any questions? Yes. What's the proprietary part of that? The proprietary? 
Well, the construction of how you take a cell, basically, you mechanically mount it, bust it electrically. You have to be able to electrically connect every one of these cells in a very reliable manner. You don't have 6,000 cells to run together. You can't reliably attach 6,000 cells over a large number of batteries. Uh, it also includes a very proprietary and very high performance thermal management system. We literally heat and cool every cell. What's, be, what's the optimal temperature? What's the range? The optimum temperature is the temperature in this room. Um, it turns out that really lithium ion cells were essentially designed for these. And these live on you. So they like to live like humans live. Um, the maximum temperature we, we can operate under all environmental conditions on the EUR, which is very important. A pure battery vehicle has a very difficult time very low temperatures, but because of our blended powertrain, we can manage this. We can also heat our battery under cold temperatures. So we basically have capability with an entire range. Uh, but as far as the cell itself, all the lithium ion cells like to stay between about 10 and 35 degrees C. There are 6,000 of those in there? No, let me be clear. We have a little over 200 Tesla batteries. The Tesla battery is over 6,000 small laptop cells. Uh, this is a large format cell. Um, this is what allows us to basically have a high reliability design. But you can't really do it in that many cells. Not in high volume. Anymore. You certainly can do it in low volume. How many volts in that? Uh, this particular chemistry is a little over 3.5 volts. Per cell? Per cell. Pardon? Three and a half volts per cell. Uh, it's very chemistry dependent. Lithium ion chemistries have a wide range of voltages. Um, we are using a very high energy density cell. This is why we can see we're, we're very certain there is no high density cell. Uh, we're very confident in So that's that's very key here. So that is a cell that you're holding. This is a cell, it's a live cell. We have it insulated on one of the uh, one of the tabs, but that is a live cell, absolutely. How uh, have you crash tested any, any vehicle with this in it? We have done uh, several layers of testing. I really can't tell you the details of those testing, but we have done vehicle level testing as well as battery and subsection level testing where we test portions of the battery. Uh, at this point in time, we have been successful, so uh, we believe we're in good shape. Plus, of course, all work we do, uh, we, we crash everything analytically many, many times, which is going to be done uh, in great detail. Now, one of the things, obviously, because the wearing this pack is mounted underneath the vehicle, you've got to be concerned about submersion testing. You know, that's something the standard standard test that's done on vehicles during development. How deep do you go with this? I mean, can it be completely submerged? Um, and that's a little, I hesitate a little bit, but let me say, submersion is incredibly important to us. We are running tests constantly, and yes, the battery can be 